I'd like to call the meeting order at 603. And we have a very special award tonight, and I'll let Darius take over. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have Miss Emily Loss here with her father, Alan. Um, and Emily has been awarded by me the Superintendent's Award for Excellence. And she was recognized at the dinner um, at Franklin Tech during December. Um, but I want to read, I kind of edited it down slightly, Emily, from the other night. It was a little long. Um, there's so many wonderful things to say about Emily. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about um, giving her this award tonight, especially on camera, so the, the whole community can know about her. Um, so I'm going to kind of read her, my little speech resume about her. Um, during her years here at Frontier Regional, Emily has maintained an maximum honors and is at the top of her class with a 4.5 GPA, which is pretty impressive. In addition to her academic success, Emily is the vice president for two years as, and is serving as president of student government during her senior year. Um, she's a student council member since ninth grade, a representative on the school's match wits team, vice president of the National Honor Society and during her senior year. She's a Tri-M Music Honor Society. She has received the University of Rochester Book Award, Kodak, Kodiak George Eastman Young Leaders Award. She is also the team captain of the Frontier Cross Country Team, a member of the Frontier Track Team, as well as a Pioneer Valley All-Star for three years and an All-Star Athlete in 2017. <coughs> Emily also has a special love for music. She started playing the trombone in fifth grade. She is a member of the Frontier Band. Um, she is also um, part of the MMEA Western District. Um, eighth, from 8th to 11th grade, the Jazz Band and the Franklin County Honor Band, the Quamon Valley Band, um, and is the band council president her senior year. She's also served on the tel telethon community, the telethon committee to help raise money for the Frontier Arts. Other clubs and interests are her, she's a member of the Kind Versity Club, the Environmental Club, the Community um, Service Club, and she also um, has performed in two musicals of Guys and Dolls and Winners of Oz. And she's also part of the Little Shop of Horrors this year, correct? Yeah. Um, you also may remember more closely this committee. Last year, Emily helped lead the student walkout in response to the Parkland shooting and assembled a group of students to attend this meeting where she gave a powerful um, speech on school violence in America. Um, Emily has shown she's not only is a leader, but she wants to make sure her voice is heard in the world. Jeremy Rogers, a history teacher at Frontier, gave me a nice summary of Emily. He said, in the 20 years of teaching at Frontier, I've seen every student <clears throat> I've seen how every student has passion for causes and subjects that interest them. After seeing Emily almost daily over the past four years, she's the first who, who I've seen who has a passion for everything. <laughs> she's involved in she's involved in a huge number of projects, extracurriculars, music, theater, sports, and other activities. In fact, every time I go to the school event, Emily is there either taking part or finding a way to help support it. She has a keen sense of right and wrong and puts a lot of effort into a fight for what she believes. Um, Emily will leave Frontier. Well, things must come to an end um, this spring and go off to impress the world. She is interested in majoring in physics at a four-year university or college and is waiting on acceptance letters from Harvard, Brown, Tufts University, Boston University, and local schools including Mount Holyoke College and the University of Massachusetts Stamps. So it is with great pleasure I give you Emily Loss, um, this year's recipient of the Superintendent's Award. Night. So there we are. Sweet. Dad's gonna take a picture. So you're gonna get in the picture with me. All right. All right. Very good. So I know it's one of those things that go back and forth. But I'm gonna have you take. Okay. And I will find something to give you on awards night for your senior class. All right. So, but congratulations. You are a true gift to our school and community. Thank you. Awesome. Congrats. Very good. And she goes to class. Bob asked, does she, have time, does she have time to go to classes? And yes, that's where that 4.5 GPA comes in, which is out of a 4.0 scale, that's kind of impressive. It's called a bonus. <laughs> it's because, yeah, there's it's some bonus in there. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, next, uh, re review and approve the minutes from December 11th. <coughs> so moved. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> All in favor? Thank you. 
Okay, where is she? It's your turn. It's my turn. It's um, your turn. All the warrants have uh, gone around a bit signed. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I'm Judy Hull. For those of you I haven't met yet, uh, I'm the other half of the uh, business management team from the Management Solution. Um, so I did send out uh, the December results to you. Um, a couple of things that, um, you know, I'm looking at some of the lines and there are some things that we certainly need to take a look at in terms of where we stand with those and whether or not we need to start doing some transfers and, and looking at those things. So we'll be working with uh, George on that uh, shortly uh, to make sure that we're in a good place. Um, because this is now the halfway point of the year, um, so this is a good time for us to do which we, uh, our due diligence in terms of looking at the budget in total, looking at our revenue streams, looking at where we stand and trying to project out to the end of the year so that we know that you're in a good place both at the local um, level as well as with your revolving and grant accounts. So that's uh, work we'll be doing between now and the next school committee meeting so we can bring that information back to you as well as um, you know, do, again, taking a look at some of the lines that, uh, you know, certainly uh, need some attention and some cleaning up. Um, budget's a snapshot in time, so it always uh, tends to uh, sort of change uh, over time uh, as, as the needs of the kids change. So you want to make sure that uh, we're, we're spending accurately and projecting accurately. Bob, you have any questions? I, uh, I always pick on you because you always I, have I, questions. I went through and I uh, provided Judy with a list of my concerns. Okay. She <laughs> mentioned that she would take a good Not look at it. Oh, I know. I <laughs> figured it would save 20 minutes time. Tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Can I just get the total number of warrants and the dollar amount? Do you have that information? We have 12 total warrants. should have this particular one that says capital plan on the corner. Um, you, well, you sat down on a spot where I didn't leave a set. <laughs> there you go. Um, no, I, got, I had two extra, so oh. that would make sense. <laughs> Thank you. Did you also want, did you get a copy of the? I just got the one. Okay, I can't give out any more. Um, I got to tell you, we, this was a, a, as you know, there's been a lot of back and forth, and I, I'm, 
it sounds, I'm not one that gives out mushy compliments, but often, um, at least not beyond yeah, my kids. Um, but this committee kind of came a long way over the last year, really understanding this material and um, coming forward with what we have tonight. Um, and I know um, Bob's going to interject some thoughts on this, even at this point. But what we did is, um, is we took the major needs and put those forward for the, I forget what we talked about at the last meeting, there's been so many sub-meeting on this. But we took the major needs within this plan and are looking to fund um, the other, um, other group the of, other, the other group of, I just don't happen to have an eye actually for a hand up. Um, the listing of other things through E and D and through the yeah. annual budget. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and I have to get a copy of that out to people. I didn't realize that when uh, I had the copies of this made, that she didn't do the last two pages. Um, and so, is there, is there a copier? Yeah, there is. Is there a new one? Yeah. So, the, this is what was sent out originally with that, the two extra pages, and that wasn't part of the packet that was that was created. I really, I need to sneak away and make that, because without it, I think you guys are half blind on that. So, um, Sarah Mitchell is right here, and I have a copy of that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. <coughs> so, we continue going on. Um, so, what we did is we took the major needs, which are the higher priced items that were scattered through the plan, and we're putting those forward for what we're borrowing against. Um, there was a lot of concerns about this, the amount of small number of projects, the oversight of those projects, and um, to simplify that, we decided to shift things around and put the um, deferred maintenance um, issues that we've had and um, some of those smaller capital projects to be taken care of at the budgets, um, out of E&D, and also out of um, uh, capital, um, capital improvement to the towns. Not this year, but in future years, future years off. So, and so handing those smaller ones. So, if you can see, um, looking underneath the where you know, right underneath where it says modified capital plan, you can see the different projects that we have. Um, we also changed from the last um, from the last plan the oversight. It was a general oversight of $45,000, as you may remember, that went through for 10 years. We cut that back to make it about 10% of the project, 5% of the track, um, the track being one project, we didn't need $60,000 oversight. Um, and really within the first five years of those projects, because we had it spread over 10 years of oversight and that didn't make sense. Um, and so basically that's what you're, you're seeing of the total look at what we're borrowing for uh, 1.8 million um, to uh, 26,664. And I guess I'm looking at questions and other committee members to chime in on uh, that other part there. The last time the subcommittee met, uh, we came to a, a number of 1 million Nine hundred ninety-eight thousand two hundred, as where we felt we would be comfortable, and the numbers that Joe has worked up are a little bit less, but I would be more comfortable going with with the one million nine ninety-eight two hundred because it gives us some room for some contingency. If something goes wrong, we don't want to have to come back and bleed. We'd like to be able to, you know, but. If the board only wants to approve the lower figure, so that nobody's going to sit here and object. Okay. And, uh, Can you reverse engineer what, what was what is the, what's missing from this one eight two six 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 four that was in our one nine 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 nine? That's in my car. Just the oversight. Just the oversight. Basically, just the oversight. Yeah. Nothing else is missing. That's what Joe said. Yeah. Just well. the one pager. Uh, yes, one pager. Because we also did the oversight. You know, beyond not just that, but we had to oversight the track over multiple years in that last one. And I think that so was forty years. That, that was forty-five a year. If I remember right, from the oversight for ten years. For ten years. Well, anyway, it's, it's the one nine nine eight two hundred is more, but it would uh, gives us a more greater contingency to handle the problems. It's up to the board, it's wherever they want. Uh, the object of the ball game is we've got so much money in uh, E and D account as soon as it gets certified. 
thought is to take about half of it, just my thought is, is to take half of it and put it into a stabilization account and take and to take a quarter of it and use that for the rest of these items that are on the list that we're not taking care of and let's pick off a hundred or hundred and twenty five thousand dollars worth of stuff and get it done. And then take the other quarter and leave it in the ED account so if we have something else that comes up during the year we're we're there. But that's not cast and stall. People can come up with their own plan. Right now we can retain five percent of our budget in the ED account. And uh, we haven't exceeded it in the past and you know we're close but we're not over the five percent. You know Bob was talking about it. I'm sure if you're talking about the other 50%, Bob's thinking about taking the other 50% and put it towards the assessment. Well, there's two ways of looking at it. Yeah, you can do it that way. It's either give them the, take it towards the assessment or put it towards these projects. You gotta pay for them somehow, somehow from the four towns. So instead of giving it back to lower your assessment to the towns, we take down, we take 50% of the products without the money in the day, and we take care of $250,000 worth of stuff. If it's $500,000, you get e &D. That's how I look at it. And I, and I think you bring up a good point in the sense of when the towns are talking about why didn't you put money toward you know, fixing some of these problems prior to this, and we kind of went round and round, but when you're talking about we're taking the very money from the pool of E&D to offset the assessments, we very well could be keeping that, then you have assessments that aren't agreeable in town. So I think we're gonna probably, I imagine we're gonna wanna go with some kind of balance on that moving forward, and, and our subcommittee did talk about a percentage to put, knock down the um, assessments, a percentage to go to the capital improvement um, uh, fund. Um, and then knocking off some of these with that, and then we also leave a little bit for the whatever it's coming the boiler fund, as they always say in these kind of things. The you know that you know where you have a catastrophic thing that could um, that needs a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. We had three three hundred fifty two in END last year when the budget process started. We used sixty of it to correct that insurance boo boo. So there was roughly three hundred, a little under three hundred left all total. We used some, we used some of it towards the budget get the rest so that's I don't know how the numbers gonna, what the numbers well, gonna be this year well, but it's well, not you know it's not well, five and six hundred thousand so I don't want anybody well, to get the, the idea that the, at least I don't think it's gonna be the number that I'm hearing is five hundred thousand dollar range well okay I'd be happy to be wrong okay but that's what I'm hearing and uh, but it's not certified it's not certified right. so don't spend it until we get it certified but right. that's the number haven't been given any indication that it's less when do they certify ours supposed to be a 24-hour thing once they send the corrected information into the state. We talked to Judy about it today. Right. So they, they submitted it. <coughs> state sent back information for them to correct. The team is supposed to correct it and send it back and it's from last week. Um, I'm hoping that it would be happening any moment now, you know, that we, they'd send it off. If they didn't send it off yesterday or today, um, I'll ask them again where we're at. But ask them Thursday. Thursday. Does, uh, I mean, I guess I want to know is, is a town expecting us every year to take money out of the ED for the assessment? I don't think so. Be, at least the four selectmen that were a part of this study, uh, they're not they're not espousing to do that. All right, they want us to, to solve our problems. Right. But at the same time, they they also want our our assessments to the towns be within the range of what their revenues are. And so it, we get there, and that's what we try to do is to keep, remember, it's a big game that we're playing. We're yep. trying to keep the services that we have in this building, you know, at, you know, not dropping any services, meaning programs for the kids, and keeping it affordable to the towns. So if we are, you know, if we're gonna throw a, I'll throw a crazy number out there so we're not, whatever. We throw a 20% increase to the town, you know, they, I'm, I'm doing a crazy number, but we do that kind of, if we do that kind of number and they, you know, they can't afford it, so they vote down our budget, then, you know, so we've got to, we got to, you know, working back and forth. But I, I do believe that we're in a spot where we can use a portion, and I think we're going to have a good year in the sense of where there, there may be, Maybe a hundred thousand dollars to go toward these capital things, and maybe a hundred thousand. That hundred thousand dollars is a big deal to knocking off. Remember, in the past, any percentage point is around a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So if we come in with a, you know, we're talking right now in the budget. You know, we're not. There's no new things coming in the budget, programmatic wise. Um, so, but you, you know, know we, we spent a lot of money in the warrants we signed tonight. 
there's eighteen thousand dollars for these uh, splits in this this room. You know, that was never budgeted. My Correct. Knowledge. All right. Correct. And you know, we've got some other things. We we do things all the time. In, in a sense of repairs and such, yeah. yes. And so in the splits, I'm going to be coming back and looking for some of the Indy money to pay for, or we're going to have to find other spots we're in the budget. We're going to have to transfer some money from one of your existing accounts Correct. to cover. Correct. But, but they did see it. Right. So, but it was, I think I talked a little bit about that last time. What's that? It was the cheapest solution to the problem in this room. Yes. The splits. Yes. Ah, bravo. So anyway, the, it's at the board's pleasure if they want to move forward and vote the bonding authorization, or we can put it off until the meeting we're having on the 22nd, and we could uh, do it that night after the uh, combined meeting, or we could do it tonight. And uh, might be better off doing it on the 22nd, so we have all the legal keys properly written and as to what the particular chapter and verse and authorizations. Is, I don't want anybody to be surprised reading in the paper tomorrow that we authorized this number. Okay. Because the last thing you want to do right now is shoot yourself in the foot. You guys have come way too far to do that. So if we need to wait until the next meeting so we can notify the four towns, this is the number we're looking at. We're going to do it on well, the four 22nd. Towns, the four towns know it already. One person from each of the four towns. That's what I'm saying. Okay. But they've also passed it on to their people. But we would hope. And finance, and finance yeah. committees have come to the meetings. The yeah. Yeah. One like Billy, planning committees have come to our meetings. That everybody's on board. Billy's right. We, the chairman could send a nice letter to the chairman of the board of selectmen in the four towns and say uh, the, the board of the regional school committee intends to put forth a borrowing authorization on the January 22nd. Handle the long-term needs of as all white subcommittee. Is that the memo that Darius got today from the town of Whaley suggests that they're getting, they're, for the capital planning purposes, they would like to know as soon as possible. But I do not want them to know by picking up the recorder tomorrow. I'm going, oh, see what those guys voted on last night? I know. That's please don't do that. All right, that's a bad idea. And, and, and I would, you know, just the way I, you know, if we wanted. If that's the play, I think it makes sense. I think we've been trying to be very transparent, yeah, yeah. but I think one last one where I will send it out to, um, the question we'll have tonight is whether or not we make the adjustment Bob's recommending, putting it, um, moving the number back back to the, the 1998 number, which has a little more contingency money in. Because you gotta remember, those numbers are as fluid as the market. You know, a sheet of plywood, even though there's no plywood project here, but this is what Joe would use as an example, you know, you know, a flat blade of you know of plywood can cost thousands from one day to the next, based depending on the project. So, you know, some of these projects they, there may be some fluctuation. Those are the numbers that were given, um, you know, through the research. But there's they're going to adjust. And um, I like a little, you know, we are confined to. I know concerns at home. As soon as you ask for more, what are you going to do with that extra money? We're confined to this project, and if we come in with savings, the hope is that we do come in with savings. And we talk about some of these energy ones, we're gonna go after energy grants to help offset the cost of those. And so we're gonna to try to find, we're gonna to try to get the number of lower, I mean, that's the game plan and all these things, between either energy grants or, yeah. Because we can't go after those until we approve. We can't go after that until we have the money. We can't but have someone come in and give us a full bid until we have the money to, for the project moving forward. This adds up. <clears throat> you take the calculator and you go boom, 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 and you arrive at this number. Contingency is always one of those words that everybody thinks you're hiding behind mm -hmm. when you put contingency money in. This adds up. Bang, 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 bang. This is what it costs. Here it is, fellas. Yep. That's it. That's as transparent as it gets. And this is going to happen in the first year or two at the most, right? These these projects yep. here are going to happen. The, the idea is over the first five years. Or less. Or, or, right. or, it, you know, it all depends on, again. The number between this <clears throat> I'm finding I think go either way. Uh, it doesn't make. I just think that the subcommittee recommended that number that night. And Bobby was here. The whole yeah. committee was there, and that's the number we recommend. Now, Joe, when he did the put this thing together, he comes up with a little bit lesser number. Uh, you know, 
it doesn't make much difference to me other than I feel more comfortable that we got enough to do it. We said we were going to do it, and so that we can do it and do it right. But if they're like Bill was saying, if they're looking at this list, track 600, this, 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 it adds up to that. It doesn't add up to one million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand two hundred dollars. Well, you just <coughs> you try to find some more things. You put, put another line down down underneath it. Overall contingency, and and and. You know, whether we use it, if we don't use it, it's going to come back, okay? Yeah, the only is thing I, is the math was, I'm sorry. Excuse me? The only thing is the math, like we were just operating on that 45000 Like that math was inaccurate. We yeah. just took that placeholder for the oversight that we had popped into the 10 years. And so if the 10% oversight or the 5% oversight, the other thing that was with combined with that was a policy, right? That we were going to request oversight to, for capital expenditures over, I, we just tossed around a number, we didn't agree to a number, and we don't have a policy on the agenda. So, like, I get what you're saying. I'm not inclined to increase the number. I'm inclined to leave the number as it is. And in, and because the I think the intention is there. Our math might have been fuzzy. We agreed to a number, but I think that the reality of the numbers on the sheet reflects the intention well, of the subcommittee. Why don't we go forward with that and, and then we eliminate the, the you know the questions? I know what you're saying about the I know what you're saying about like a buffer. Everybody wants a buffer, but if the if the subcommittee. <clears throat> The newly formed subcommittee, like if that if we're lucky enough to get this implemented and everything works out the way we plan, and the subcommittee and the oversight people are will are, are able to get grants and other savings, and we're able to chop away at it with E and D over the year or whatever we whatever our plan is, I think we actually will come in, even accounting for the increase in expenses well, due to all the other I can, I can go material with the costs. Offer, but I just wanted to present the fact that that's what the subcommittee came up with. Yeah. And if, you know, if, if, I'm not going to get upset if we don't get the higher numbers. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So make the motion? Are we voting so on this? Okay. On a motion. I'm making a motion we, right now that we vote this number that you brought to us, and I, I, I will. I, it's a PS. A motion, I think. Hold on. Yeah, I think a motion. we need to be as transparent as we're being, and I I agree. The question was whether or not to make to move this vote to the 22nd and then also disseminate this to everyone so them first so that there's complete transparency they know they were going but they have not seen this final copy because i know i wasn't going to send it to all the committees until you guys approved but we're but the lower number but yeah, right. we'll send yeah. the, we'll send the exact we was in front of you here unless there's any other so we just need a motion to table it until it no just features. a motion to direct whoever is going to send the letter to send the letter to the four towns with this no, number in it tell them we're going to vote on it on the 22nd right so tonight we're tabling a vote. Right. Yes. So tonight, but we're moving this. We're moving this draft forward to a vote. Yeah, so yeah, kind of that like it, it's, it speeds up the next vote because we know. Exactly. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So I do have one more question about this. So we're you going to kind of do that. The the if, at the bottom of the front page, first page, we're estimated estimated tax rate impact if debt excluded. So we know from. We know that there's at least one town that is very interested in doing a debt exclusion, but we don't know whether it is in the financial interests of the other three towns, and I'm, I'll just speak for my town, I don't know if it's in the best interest of my town to pursue that, but he's, he's providing a calculation as if it's already done. He's, he's just looking? giving that as a reference point to what is that going to cost per um, you know, $1,000 value. You know, so or hundred thousand so, dollar value. So right? one of the things that I asked was, does he have any feedback or any? Is there well, what is the formula for determining when a debt should be, what, when a town should consider? Uh, I think it's going to be up to the finance committees of each town to decide if they want to put it debt excluded or not. Right? Is, is that that's my understanding of that? I can ask. Uh, him, I can ask Joe any question. He'll come to any meeting. Can we also talk about <clears throat> for the track using CPA money for the track? I mean, I mean if they want, if they want to, if, they, if people want to pay for. The track portion of it through CPA money. I mean, so that there's be, options. That'd be part of your letter to select them, invite them if they're interested in notifying them. I don't think it's a, no. incumbent upon us to tell them what how to do this. If they want to get excluded, let them. If they want to take it out of taxation, let them. But well, we should. Yeah, I'm I don't thought he said that at the meeting. Yeah. I thought he said you could do whatever you want to do based on whatever you need. Yeah. But I also remember him saying he was willing to talk to anybody about it. So there's, there's got to be some formula that they use to, to, to I mean, they, you don't exclude everything. You, you, 
Yeah, something. Yeah, something. You have to exclude death. Right, right. But there's got to be some. There's, there's got to be. There's got to be some rules to the road that I, I don't know. I look mean, at my well, I mean, you, you can understand why they do it because when you know for those the debt exclusion is it comes off the tax rolls when we're done paying this off. Right. So you your tax increase it then comes drops off. It doesn't stay on. If they don't debt exclude it. Stays off for well, we for ten years. Have to make sure that language is drafted the motions are okay. done properly and so I don't know if uh, our accountant can tell you exactly how to draw that you know, the other I will guys find that, out find someone will tell me how to do it yeah the other guys that uh, are going to say we did it wrong if we did it wrong right. so maybe the, we want the revenue is going to as a as a you know a thing that a draft or a template to make sure we do it for right Okay. So I'll do it twice. I agree. <laughs> do you guys want to do a a vote to table with this plan? Is where we just, just I just did a request. A request, request to do it, and that's fine. Everybody's yeah, we're sending a notification to the boards of selectmen and finance committee. Uh, as I wrote it, request that interim superintendent Darius Modesto send notice to the select board chair of each town informing them that the Frontier Regional School Committee intends to put forth a borrowing authorization in the amount of. One, yeah, a lot. One eight two six 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 four at the January twenty second, twenty nineteen meeting of the of the joint school. Uh, no, no, it's not. We'll, it's our it's meeting. Our we'll, meeting. Close, right. we'll close the yeah. joint meeting yeah. and, then, and then do the vote and then close that. Yeah, to support the Frontier Regional Capital Plan. Okay. Want to do it early that night or after? We'll do that. It's up to the, it's we'll up to the chairs and deciding how they want to do it after. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to. Shouldn't Kitchen be You know, this number is a lot lower than the, the previous one we gave. Well, they, they know, they know what we're looking to do. There, we ordered the other number. Yeah. And everything was to keep it under two. All right, we'll do that. Thank you. That's the home stretch. Round of applause. Well, we'll get there. Applause, yeah. Right. Right. There, yeah. there you go. No. <laughs> the home stretch. Finish lines. I think I got back to the yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna vote on this eighth grade trip since last time we couldn't do it because they had two different Washington DC trips. So moved. Second. Yeah. Any other discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Frontier Regional School Capital Plan. That. That's you just saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, update to 19. Uh, update to 219 Christian Lane. Um, so all our records are now stored under lock and key at Frontier. Um, and we're starting to, now that they're here, oh, exactly. we're starting to do the waiting process in house. Um, I wasn't able to get the exact savings. We, you may remember that money was put aside to do a full digitization of them and such. And just to kind of let everyone know where we're at, the Central Office staff was not 100% behind that, going to that kind of method, getting away from the paper product. Um, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money. And so we saved thousands and thousands of dollars doing it the way we just did it. So um, I didn't have the exact numbers and I could probably try to go find them so I can get a big pat on the back. But in the end, um, we did save money because you know basically we moved them from one area, thinned them out, put them in a cab, in a file uh, closet here. I do thank Frontier for giving up another closet. <laughs> Storage space is not, um, it's not easy in this building, but that's Everybody next faces George's office. <laughs> uh, I thought about giving up my office at one point. I, I started getting worried about it not fitting. I was like, okay, they'll go raid my office. Uh, I'm not going to wear this for uh, being wrong. But no, they do. They do for the most part. Um, for the most part fit, and um, a lot of those files are rolling files, and they get turned over every seven years, and some we keep forever. So um, we did that, and we did the whole thing for just under a thousand dollars for the move of all those things. Yeah, so. We had budgeted over 20. I don't know what that exact number was, but that was also to include somebody else to go through our files to digitize them and also to organize them and weed them. And so we are going to go through the weeding process ourselves. Um, I think the people who own the files and work with the files, my, my staff, want 
don't want somebody else going through. It, by going through, you see what you have, you're responsible for it, and, um, and that kind of thing. And so, um, yeah, and so they're gonna create their own filing system they know, you know, and actually right now the, the, the file system is more organized than it's ever been. It's by year, it's alphabetical, it's, you know, they, and now they can rotate out, do not destroy until whenever, you know, whatever the due dates are. So we're in a good spot. So we saved a lot of money there. And, um, it's not to say that the last plan was a bad one. We just went a different direction. Um, so that kind of thing. You're looking for 17,000, 18,000. I think that money's actually, I gotta find out exactly where that money is. I'll be honest, I see if it's 18, if that's where it went to. Because I don't know where, with the two different, I don't know exactly where that money is. I think it's in the end. So, I don't think we're going to see it as an extra pot of money that's covered. Right. I got it. I got to figure that out. It's on my list. <coughs> All right, so that's where we are there. Thank you. Yep. Oh, the other one was the sale, right? Was that combined with the sale? Well, it's on the next page of new business or something. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is. We'll get to that. Okay. Sorry. Uh, update on alternative posting methods. So, you'll see as part of your handout, we got a letter from the state that we can officially. Just, for the, this is mostly for the public announcement that we can post online, that our website is now considered the official posting place for regional meetings only. So those of you who serve in towns, we still have to do it the, um, I won't say old fashioned way, the conventional way of having to, but we still are emailing all the towns, any postings that we're doing online. We're not making them go fetching it, we're gonna send it to them, but we don't have to wait for them to post it. We can post on our line here. And that's gonna, that's gonna save us sometimes when, if for some reason we had an emergency meeting on a Thursday, we then can make our next meeting on a Tuesday without having offices be open, you know, that kind of thing, where we would have where sometimes they're not open on a Friday or not open on a Monday. It was, you know, causes us headaches when we're trying to put in extra meetings and that kind of thing. So especially the town halls that close certain things. That's why there are town halls that are closed on Friday. That's why I said if we have a meeting on Thursday and then you want to have a meeting the following week on Monday or Tuesday, sometimes you can't do it because we kept it posted for forty eight hours. Now we can. So if we have questions about that, okay. Get the consultant. Got a letter from the state. We have George Asari. It's in your George Asari, you're up next. The adjusted high school schedule plans. Yeah. And there's a and there's a handout coming around as well. So, um, just to give you a little background, we've been talking for many many years about how the schedule is not working. Um, <laughs> And if, if there was a perfect schedule out there, we would all have the same schedule across Western Mass. It was funny because just as we, after we started looking at these pieces, um, Amherst came to visit our school to look at the block schedule and the, the split year. And we went off to other schools and looked at their schedules. And everyone's kind of grappling with this issue of how do you make more things fit into the day while at the same time giving kids what they need and giving them some downtime and some, some opportunities to, to do some work. Um, but that said, there's been a lot of changes that have happened um, in Frontier since, I think, 1992, 1998, um, 1998, when the original block schedule was adopted. We have gone from having two AP classes to having 14 AP class offerings. We've gone from having uh, requirements of two or three um, classes in a content area to having four required classes in content area. Some of this has come down from the state. Some of these are things that we felt were important for students to have. Um, and so towards that end, we're trying to fix the schedule enough so that we can um, put a little bit more wiggle room in. Some of the other challenges that we had were um, in the middle school, we have um, advisory period, which allows students to get extra help from teachers and allows students to get a head start on, on homework. We don't have that at the high school level. Um, we have arts classes that are in conflict with other classes. So for example, the band block happens and then a student who wants to take band is kind of blocked out some of these other electives or some of these other AP offerings. And it was just getting really challenging. Our kids are involved in more activities than ever. They're in after school arts, they're in athletics, they're doing plays and musicals. 
uh, which are all great things, but they really put a lot of pressure on a student to um, get a lot of things packed in. But Dirk's going to talk a little bit about some of the changes that we've made to the schedule in order to try to fix some of those issues. And so in order to create the wiggle room, what's happened once, so basically what we created was what was initially called a skinny. So it was a 45 minute short block, uh, at, specifically at the high school level. Uh, so what this is going to be doing, it's going to be adding five additional credits each year to the high school. And so there are going to be an increased number of credits now needed for graduation. Uh, students are going to be required to take two and a half of these credits as a direct study. Uh, special ed skill classes will count towards this requirement. Um, band and strings will be offered during this 45 minute short block. Um, and so only elective non singleton classes will be offered during the short block. So there won't be any competing classes for the performing arts classes. That was one of the things that we were trying to rectify. There was, there was the people wanted to be able to take arts or they wanted to be able to take AP and oftentimes they were in conflict with each other. So, so the, the hope is that this will uh, alleviate that conflict. Um, there is going to be a continued limit of 30 AP credits per year. Uh, and, but we're also hoping, hoping down the line that we will offer more electives. Um, uh, some, of the, some of the things that we're going to we're considering uh, next year, there's going to be a sociology class that's going to be offered. Some of the things that we're considering, uh, we're looking into an early. Uh, we're hoping that we can work towards maybe doing early childhood, um, uh, sports medicine, or mythology. So we're hoping that this will sort of start, you know. Uh, providing breathing room and, and once again alleviating some of the conflict that's been happening between uh, students and wanted to take certain uh, arts electives uh, and AP courses. So we're, we're hopeful. Um, if you wanted to take a look at the actual schedule and what it looks like, you can flip it over and it's, it's here. Simple as pie. Simple as pie. And, yeah. uh, and, and, It'll be a quiz as you yeah. <laughs> What time does we Kate give a shout out. I think we should school? give a shout out to Polly. Yes. To Polly yeah. Wozniak, yeah. one of our middle school math teachers, for really helping helping out with, with creating the schedule. With the, with the middle school so side. Minds so the goal was also well to not impact what was happening at the middle school because what we yeah. have at the middle school is working. And so we were trying to um, reduce the impact of their schedule. And so we ended up making a few tweaky changes to the middle school side, and that's what Polly helped out with, was trying to figure out how to reduce the impact there. What do the teachers think about it? We've had a lot of conversations. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, I'm not going to put you on the spot, Allison. But, um, so there, I think everyone is at the point at the, on the high school side of we need to do something. Yeah. So let's try this and see if this does what we need it to do and we'll reevaluate in a year and see where we are. So I think people are, some people are optimistic, some people are cautiously optimistic, and some people are in a wait and see pattern to see if, if this really does what we hope it will do. I, I would say the majority of people are, are, op are open to it. And, and so. Do we know of any school system that does this now? This exact model? This exact no, model. No. Um, there were, That's good. You, if it works, yes. <laughs> exactly. we Frontier will be on the map again. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we did look at a school um, actually down in Pennsylvania that had a five block schedule, um, and we decided on this variation because it was going to create, it wasn't going to solve what we needed it to solve. And that's why we ended up going with and I, just to add in, though, because I think you're not giving yourself credit, and, and Allison can correct it, but this has been something that was not developed top down, but with the teachers, there were, you guys had many, many meetings, not just from this year, but there's been subcommittees talking about the schedule and its problems. Um, you know, this this was the final push was this year was this, you know, the, the option was that when we had to make a final push, so we came up with this, gone to the teachers back and forth. There's been a lot of communication, so this is not something I kind of. It was mandated top down without input. And, and, and you're nodding yes, that's yes. correct in the sense that it wasn't top down um, that way. So there has been a point. And so there is some, there are, is any new change, some people are cautious about it, or, um, and, and there are some naysayers, but for the most part, I think it's receiving, there's a positive reception to let's try something. Um, you know, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited that you're, we've reached this point. I'm not excited I'm not in that seat to be there when it happened. <laughs> you can, you the, can come on down. The only, reason, the only reason I said about the teachers, you know, we're doing new contracts right now, so I didn't know if that was going to interfere with our new contracts that we have going on at the high school level. Talk about it there. Okay. This, and talk about that in open session. I know. <laughs> <laughs> One question. It, it says band and strings is only going to be offered in a short block of 45 minutes. Yeah. And 
No. Are you going to be adequately able to take care of all the children that want to participate in that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, in the whole, and one of the goals was um, to make sure that we weren't offering anything opposite that. So, in other words, if we are still going to offer electives during that short block, but it won't be an elective that's only offered during that short block. So, for example, a health one class. Health one would be offered during that 45, but there would also be long block options for the health one class. And so a student wouldn't be forced into a corner where they're having to choose between health one and band. They could always take the band, and then they can take their health one at another period of time. But well, the 45 minutes that's offered is going to be sufficient to it, take care of the children that want the instruction. Yes, it should be, yes. Because it's going to be 45 minutes every day instead of 86 minutes every other day. Right. So basically we've cut the time in half, but we're offering it every day. I just want to make sure it works. Yep. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the idea is band, for those who, band runs a high school schedule because it's the one class where everybody has to be in the class at once right. for it to be done properly. Right. And it's, seven, it's nine through 12. So you get all the whole school that has to be in one particular time. And so you can't have anything. So you, you know, it, it causes, if anybody you know, works in the working at a high school, you know that it's a the band runs the schedule. So this is a way to remove that. And isn't during um, middle school classes right now are shorter. They're not these long blocks and they have it every day. So that would just be, we're just putting like middle school band like exactly. in here, right? Exactly. So it'll be, and they yeah. make real good strides. And there's, yeah. and there's an argument also to say that offering something for a shorter period of time every day is more effective yeah. than longer on every yes. other, because of stamina. Something like that. Yes. Oh, exactly. All of those yeah. types of things, so. Yeah. So, um, I got a question about the new electives, and I'm all for it. But the um, the the thing about new electives, are, uh, don't I mean, don't they take a while for word of mouth to get out, that whatever? And so, is there a metric? You know, what? Uh, how low can enrollment be and right. still be carrying on? How many years are you going to stick with it? it you know, and right. the, because with, with these things, when you got a kid seventh, eighth, ninth, they're looking at the schedule, they're looking at what they want to take. They get to eleventh grade when the things are off, whatever, and then it's low enrollment. We pulled it this year. And right, did, right, and that is, and that's why we're not offering all of these all at once next year. So we're starting with sociology because there's been interest in that. We have a lot of independent studies that happen every year, and so the reason why we kind of uh, pick these particular topics is because I sit through five or six um, physical therapy slash sports medicine presentations for independent studies every year. Every single year there's five of them. So if there's five of them, there's probably seven more students out there, 12 more students out there that are not doing it. Are, the independent study, but would be interested in that topic. And so we're looking at it from that angle. As we expand how many credits students have to fill, we'll have room for more electives right now. But we've got to take baby steps because we don't want to be in the situation where we're offering 10 and we have to cancel five every year. You know, you want to just kind of slowly and, increase. It may be information overload, but the way we do it is there's a process where kids sign up look at the numbers and then they re-sign up again based on if things couldn't run because of enrollment. You know, I would say, you know, economics is a good class that shows that some years we have the numbers to run it and some years we don't. And so it does become a disappointment when it's a roll. But that's another reason why we also rotate the APs every other year so you can plan ahead because you're not going to get enough enrollment in a single year. That way it would allow you to have some of the APs. There's also, there's also a wave. Like there's some things that are very popular for a period of time and then it just starts to drift down. And, and then, you know, accounting is a good example. I mean, back 15 years ago, accounting was a very robust program, a very robust course. And the numbers drifted, drifted, drifted until they hit a point where it was no longer a viable program because kids weren't interested in it. It's a huge need for that in this area. Yes, yes. there is. <laughs> We've had a business back in, but anyway, yeah. different program. Keith has a question. Just a quick question. So is an A period class on an even day different than an A period class on an odd day? Those two different classes? No, same class. So, so if you have a math, if you have algebra one during A block, if you have it at the beginning of the day on even days, and you have it at the end of the day on odd days. So I'm just wondering how if 
if uh, a health class is on a C period for 46 minutes, yep. but another health class is offered in a different period for like that 70, how does that? Balance? It's an every other day class. So okay. we still, so we have, we still have split block classes that run kind of on an AB schedule in other schools. So we have an A1 and an A2, and so some of those elective like art classes, and so that's why that's why we can do the math and do that split because we've got that flexibility. Yeah, that was another fix, you know, years ago. <laughs> Bob, question: Civics. Civics. It's being embedded in social studies. It's now part of the new social studies yeah. standard, and so it's in Grady heavily. Um, but then it's also been interwoven into all of the other social studies classes because it's a huge, huge emphasis in the well, I know there's an emphasis that, yeah. but back in the olden days, civics was a class. Yes, and that, and it, essentially it's taken over grade eight. And so what we're doing is we're doing a combination of civics and US-1. We're still leaving the name of the course US-1, but it's a heavy civics component with the new standards. Bob, did you take it back when you were a little kid? Yes, and I had a teacher, but her name was Mrs. Kate. <laughs> and it was a classroom around the corner downstairs, just past the ladies' room. Wow. Is it still there or is it locked up now? It's there. Now it's still there. That's a lot of more for Mr. Sherrill. For kids who had to drop band or who elected to drop band to take an AP course this year, Will they be able to drop back in, even though they've I see no in? reason why he wouldn't take them back into band, yeah. Um, because it's, you know, they, they have kids of all sorts, different ability levels anyway to begin with, and he does a lot of differentiation in that class, so. Mr. Cheryl knows this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have any more questions? Great presentation. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We're excited. Thanks, thank you. I think everybody's excited. Yeah. I'm fully excited. Except for maybe the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're coming to the too. <laughs> Only uh, what are the uh, school choices? <laughs> 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 I just want to make sure you do doesn't get the last time on the table. Good show. Okay, substitute teacher pay rate. <clears throat> All right, so <laughs> Madison. Right, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, um, the Massachusetts has raised the minimum wage to um, twelve dollars as of January first. Frontier pays for a six-hour and a quarter day for substitutes, which comes out to exactly twelve dollars an hour. Okay, so at the seventy-five dollars an hour rate we currently are. Okay, the elementary schools, the wages because the way their schedule is and the supervision is a little bit extended for drop-off and pickup, um, they have a six and a half-hour day. So they fall just below the um, minimum wage at $11, and I forget the exact number, I wrote it down somewhere, but I'm speaking without my notes in front of me. Um, so we had to raise that with the elementary schools. And I would like, my, my recommendation to the committee tonight is to keep Frontier in line with what we're paying the subs for the elementary and Frontier at $80 an hour. It puts us in line with most of the other schools in our area. There are a couple that are gone a little bit higher already. Next January, minimum wage in Massachusetts will go to twelve seventy-five. dollars By 2023, it'll be around $15. So we're going to have to look at the budget subcommittee was just talking about this prior to this meeting that we're going to have to discuss about increasing that the substitute line item slightly and look at our, our usage and that kind of and that kind of thing. But um, I'm recommending at this point we we keep things consistent as subs across, even though it's a slightly different amount of time because um, right now we do a daily stipend for the day. So moved. Exactly. Any other discussion? A little discussion. Uh, it doesn't affect us, but next year it will, because it's a it's a mandate, an unfunded mandate from the Commonwealth. I mean, we're we're not required to do it at this point. The elementary schools are, but Frontier isn't because we're already at the number. But next year it's next year when we prepare the budget for next year, it's going to be an impact that is unfunded, and the state auditor normally pursues that and sees if we get. You know, it's not a lot of money, but it's still, it's an unfunded mandate. And, uh, well, it's an unfunded mandate for every small business, every restaurant, every diner. I agree with you. But, but, like, but there's a thing. 
there's a thing that says that the legislature can't do it to us. Public entities. What's that? It's also required of. I was told it was not required. I don't know. Public entities. There's minimum wage applied. But that public applies. entities would be crazy not to do it because the private industries are out. But I was told it was not a mandate for us. Not that I think it's not a good thing to do. I think the quicker we get to 15, the better. Okay. The better. The better we look for subs. But I don't, I don't believe it was a definite, even though I, I think Cindy's right. totally support what we're doing. I don't think, I don't, I don't, well. I, I wish I, we could give him 15 minutes. Well, I, I wish yeah. we could. We could I asked a legal eagle, we'll check on it. No, it, 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 uh, Cindy's right both in the legality and in the, 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 it's still wise to do it as well, I think. Um, but, but I think it's not an unfunded mandate because it was a ballot measure and a constitutional amendment, and those don't get subjected to that test either. That was a constitutional amendment? Yeah, I think it was a ballot measure. I don't know. I stand corrected. I have to check. I know Cindy was talking about the quicker we get the 15, the, the better we be, but at this point of what we're paying 75 to 80, we're still getting good qualified substitute people that want to come here and be substituted at Frontier and at our elementary schools because we have great schools. I oh, know, I said, I told I'm you saying, I mean, what we're doing, I just wish we could do it differently. Probably everybody here feels that way, but how we are doing it is at least acceptable. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. Certificate of sale. So we made a vote on July 17th um, authorizing Bill Cantor um, to um, the Mayor of the Frontier Regional School Committee to execute the sale. Um, they would like, they being our attorney and the selling attorney would like this exact language um, used moving forward because the buyer has changed to an LLC for the purchase of this. And so that has to be has to be put into the minutes, and then I got to make sure we give them a signed copy of the minutes as part of the the legality of that. This board has authorized the sale of this building. So he just asked for a revote of it, and um, you know, for the minutes, and I'll let you copy it. But I'll just read it, and I'll hand it to you. To authorize Philip Cantor, member of the Frontier Regional School District Committee, to execute on behalf of the Frontier Regional and Union 38 School District a quick claim deed and all other documents necessary to transfer the real property located at 219 Christian Lane, Lot 2, Waitley Mass, to Waitley School, Waitley Mass to Waitley Schoolhouse, LLC, for $1,000. Um, and then I have, to, I have to sign a certified statement that I am who I am and I oversaw all that. But So they would like that in the minutes and that voted directly on the minutes. So really straightforward, you already voted it once, but it didn't have the LOC as the major. So what does, does, Phil, does Phil have to sign this one? Or Phil's going to have to sign it with a notary. And so okay. we'll work, we, Phil, you and I have to talk. Okay. We have a notary right here. And all my stuff there. with me. Oh. <laughs> 10 bucks. <laughs> 10 bucks. I for free. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's noted in that. the minutes. Yeah. I didn't yeah. That down. Okay. Uh, so we have the vote on this. So Hold on. Who seconded? Oh, no, no one's on anything yet. I'm oh, no. Olivia seconded. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I didn't hear you. Any other discussion? Thank you. All in favor? Uh, mm -hmm. Time. Unanimous is fine. You've got to declare it unanimous because otherwise you have to have a roll call. Okay. Do that too, Bob. Because it's the sale of the sale. The chair declares it unanimous. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Just want to make sure they don't come back at us again. This is the, this is the one vote where it could come back, right? Okay. NESDEC enrollment report. Everybody got it? Um, if you didn't get it, Thank you. Oh. We got more children. <laughs> so Frontier's gone up slightly. Um, our school choice has also gone up um, the last couple years, especially in the middle schools where we've had a cap um, the overall enrollment. Um, I think, again, you look at these numbers, they're, they're, they're difficult, and I think, and I, I remember a couple of years ago when this came out, and I think Bill probably brought it up and said, um, we were supposed to have over 1,000 students after the building renovation project of 98, and we never, we never got to that number. So um, 
again, it's an informational piece to kind of look at where the trends are. Um, again, I have one for each of the schools where you can see um, just kind of where we're going. It shows us kind of going up a little bit and then dropping off again um, over the next few years, but five years out. But with that, the changes of that, I don't know. I mean, it, it's. Uh, I look at things like the new apartment complex going up in Sunderland, you know, with the 150 units there. Um, you know, what is that going to do? They don't have that in this report. You know, those kind of things. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of overall, in a nutshell, what I got from my, when I read through it. I noticed that the last page, a lot of the numbers aren't there, and I'm going to find out if it's because we didn't, it was on our end not providing them, or for some reason they didn't get out of there. Sorry. Right. So it's, again, it, and then on most of the reports, it has after five years level, which just means they have no idea. So, and it's understandable. It's, it's a moving thing. But anyways, that was just sent, sent out for your information. And if you have any questions or anything, you can let me know. You have more children on the enrollment as opposed Correct. We are larger this year than we were last year. Some of those uh, special ed numbers on the three and three. I mean, I'd have to go. I'd have to go through it, but you know, we're, we build programs in house to keep students here. So that, that's certainly a, from this last year to this year. I don't have the I don't know, George. I don't know. I don't know. Last year, we're um, better ten kids from uh, the November. Yeah, and I, I mean, we have made a concerted effort to you know out there. I think the school's in a good place. It's doing very well. I think. Uh, um, it's got a good reputation out there right now. School choice, like I said, we've had to um, deny students for the first time um, in many years over th three different classes last year. Um, so that's where we're at. <coughs> good place to be in. I imagine other schools would want to be in that place. Oh, okay. Okay, we can. So, anyway, so that was informational. Uh, next is presentation of the FY20 quote budget. Yes. <laughs> Did have your name down there? I just I actually sat in on the meeting, well not on the subcommittee, but I'll let Bill talk. Um, basically, that was our first meeting, and we've just we're just warming up the plane, so we have <laughs> we're not even taxiing now or anybody yet, so I have nothing, absolutely nothing to tell you. We are going to meet again. Uh, Hopefully, but we will have numbers for you. Well, we will have numbers for you at the February meeting. So we're going to be, we have two other meetings scheduled before between then and now. We're waiting for the governor's budget to be coming out shortly. We're waiting for uh, the accountant's firm to populate the rest of the numbers. And uh, it's a very, it's a very extensive program that they're putting together to make the thing work. But it's when it gets done, you're going to be able to change the whole thing instantly. You plug a number in with the macros that are in, built into the program, you plug the numbers in and everything will change. You know, how we used to, have, every time we made a change, we used to have to go back to the John board and wait for three days for the central office to be able to produce it, and we'll be able to get this thing. So we're probably not as far along at this point as we generally are, but don't panic, we'll be there. Yeah. We were assured, Bill was assured that we would be. Yes. Um, I have nothing. Collaborative haven't met yet, right? Collaborative. Well, uh, it has a budget subcommittee meeting on the 22nd at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's a public meeting. Anybody's welcome. Are you going? I expect to be there. Okay. Yeah. Do they have breakfast? <laughs> uh, no, but we can put budget here for I can, I can put my expenses at 8 o'clock. You want to come with us, you can. Um, I have a busy day that day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me just check my calendar here. Uh, I mean, Hold on. 22nd. It's um, a busy day. Yeah, busy day. <laughs> Very busy day. You get blank, right? No. You want to see my calendar? No, I'm just teasing. So anyway. Um, yeah, it's... actually I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 it's on the table. I'll be back. George, what do you have for us, George? So I have a Save report. A we'll, pass it. We'll, we'll pass it around. Um, and we'll go through it quickly. So 
just a few brief informational notes. Uh, I'm going to start off with, uh, with our partnership with the College Board. Uh, we've ha we were just visited by a representative of the College Board. Uh, they're working with us in, on looking at the data from uh, PSATs. Um, and uh, we're working with them. They've also uh, they have a program called Leaping Potential, which we're which we're utilizing as well, uh, which has to do with um, basically helping to identify students that may uh, that may be um, well suited for AP classes that may be slipping through the cracks. Um, and we've um, so we we already had one PD with uh, the College Board, and and thereafter we also had another PD where our teachers uh, departmentally were looking at the PSAT scores, and they were able to parse the data. Um, so. So um, that's a, a good thing. Uh, number two, we've updated our school messenger capabilities. So now we're, we're sending out a, an automated message, um, either voicemail or email or both. Uh, if, a, if a student is absent from school, uh, we're getting very positive feedback from, um, from parents about this. Uh, and it's, 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 a, it's a great way. Um, it's an extra layer of accountability, which is wonderful. Uh, we are going to be having an informational night for families on vaping on January 16th. Um, Scott Dredge is working on that, as well as uh, as our SRO, uh, Brian Rabish. Um, uh, we're, number four, we're, we are participating in, in Project 351. We're, we're, uh, we're going to be sending four eighth grade ambassadors, one from each of the towns, uh, to Boston for the opening ceremonies on the 19th. Uh, Jason Smith has been working on this. He's been, he's been heading this up for a while now, so I want to thank Jason for that. Um, I wrote this on, on my, my Google Docs, so I did put a link there. Um, it was a live link, but obviously when you print it out, it doesn't stay live. So if anybody wants the link, uh, you can, actually, if you just go to YouTube and you search, you type in Project 351, you can get it. Um, so, but that does, I would like to be able to share these things with you guys electronically. I think that would be, for me, like that would be a, a nice thing to do. It would be a little bit easier. Um, and then you can have access to them and you can save them a little pretty easily. Um, and also recently we had just had a penny drive. Uh, it was just for a couple of weeks, but we raised $84.66 for the opioid task force. Uh, also, um, Scott, uh, our assistant principal, and our SRO Brian are going to be going to uh, Desi is uh, sponsoring a statewide uh, opioid um, awareness uh, and prevention uh, workshop also on the 16th during the day, and they're going to be attending that. Uh, it's something that obviously we're, we're, we are concerned about, and it's something that we want to try to make inroads, inroads on. Um, and then for the important dates, I just want to point out one thing. I just got a, the January 17th Fort Town Safety Meeting that was initially scheduled for January 10th. That was just changed as of today. Everything else should be pretty much so. So things are going well. Round Anybody have any questions for George? Thanks, George. Thank you. Gary's my initiative in front, my report's been in front of you. It's very brief in the sense of. I've seen so many of you at some of these subcommittee meetings. Um, <laughs> but we talked about Christian Lane. We talked about that the um, uh, the collective uh, bargaining is underway. The, the, the dates and times of those upcoming meetings are just listed there. And um, the bid for T for the business manager service, um, we had one bid. It was TMS, surprise, surprise. Um, and they came in at the, the cost that they were doing for the first half of the year. So um, they were awarded the bid for um, until July 30th, 31st. Then. Um, at the 22nd meeting of the joint meeting, we'll discuss um, what we're going to do next year for business manager services. So I'm prepared to talk about that then. Does anybody else have anything they want to share with us? Yeah, I guess one thing. I just want to offer a tip of the cap to Darius because I've, I've been sitting up here a long time, and I think I've received more information ahead of a meeting from him than I have from the previous five superintendents combined. Anybody who knows me knows I don't like surprises, and I appreciate very much as a member knowing stuff ahead of time, like the thing in the newspaper about the race. It's a, it's a little thing, but I don't like going to the transfer station and have somebody say, hey, what are you guys doing? I don't tell what they're talking about. <laughs> and I hate that. So I, the, the information that comes ahead of a meeting keeps me a little smarter, and I appreciate it very much. You're welcome. Um, we also have, just on the, on the agenda, the executive session, again, we are, um, it's on there for every single time if you ever want to get an update on negotiations. I would say right now, 
we're in good shape. We're in good shape right now. It's a perhaps the next one would be a good time for an update because we haven't really got into anything where <laughs> the, high, the high school group I right know the high school yeah the high school group is 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 a pleasure to work with whether it's the teachers or, or the or the Bob they're all a pleasure to work yeah, with yeah sure. yeah some of us have to work with the other group there Bob. <laughs> hey, hey I have to work with the other group too but I, it, it is true to say it is true to say what Bob's saying is that right now it is going very so well far, everybody and everybody, everybody it's a there's a good feeling among in the group even yeah. under the yeah, tension topics there's yeah, there's, there. there's good um, rapport. <laughs> Need a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? <laughs>